we had arrived in India, where we're about to begin our 1600 km journey down the west coast. But first we would spend a few days in Mumbai, getting acclimatised to all things Indian. This meant getting used to the busy city streets, full of all sorts of traffic, the constant noise, the constant chaos, constantly getting asked for selfies, and of course, eating every type of food we could find. It was nice to try some new things, and eat with the locals as much as possible. We found ourselves enjoying everything about Mumbai. It's a city that has so much going on everywhere you look. I don't think we stopped smiling and laughing the whole time we were there. We were even lucky enough to catch up with some local cyclists for breakfast and a morning ride around the city. Just gone for a little social ride here in Mumbai this morning. Met up with some local cyclists and met the Mumbai Mayor of Cycling. Uh, went for breakfast. Now we're back out in the traffic and it's getting a bit busy. After a few days it was time to leave the city and start our journey south through rural India, where we were immediately faced with traffic of a different kind. We made our way along the quiet and ever-changing roads, with plenty of hills, dirt tracks and small villages along the way, sticking to the coastline as much as possible. We weren't sure what to expect of the landscape before coming here, but we couldn't have dreamed it would be this good. It was just like tropical countryside, with plenty of river crossings, endless open farmland and palm lined beaches. Starting early meant that we were out on the road for the quietest and most beautiful part of the day, with the added benefit of getting in some kilometres before the midday heat set in. First stretch of coast coming out of Mumbai has just been like countryside riding, little villages along the way. The road surfaces are changing all the time. At the moment we're on a nice smooth stretch. Uh, always beautiful landscapes, lots of uh, lots of beaches, farms, heaps of cows, and yeah, just been great riding so far.
vast contrast to the chaotic cities that India is known for, we found plenty of quiet rural trails, some with a little bit of light traffic, and empty country and coastal roads. We were never far from a makeshift roadside shop selling a variety of snacks and sweet chai, or a sugarcane juice shop, or a stall selling all sorts of delicious treats, like fried samosas, fried curry sandwiches, fresh steamed idlis, or pea chutney. And also, never far from smiling, friendly people. Nice young guy just pulled over named Ash who asked if we wanted to go over to his place for some tea and coffee. So we're gonna head in there now. Just gotta get ourselves over this hill first. We followed Ash back to his grandparents' home in their small village. And when we began chatting, we found out that since returning home after studying abroad, Ash had been on a journey of his own, having recently walked 1,800 kilometers across the width of India. We instantly felt a connection with Ash and felt so at home with him and his grandparents. He showed us around their property as we chatted about travel, life and India and were invited to stay for dinner and to spend the night with them in their home. We were shown immense generosity and care there and there was such a sense of happiness and tranquility among the village community. It was an experience that warms our hearts to this day. When it was time to leave, it was hard to say goodbye, as it was a place that we felt instantly at home. I know that one day we'll be back there again, enjoying the peaceful life they live with them in their idyllic village. As we continued south towards Goa, we passed through more countryside full of simple mud brick homes, crossed over more rivers that met the sea, took breaks on hilltops to catch our breath and admire the views, and stopped for any animals that might cross our path. Not a day went by that we didn't get stopped by people asking us where we were from, where we were going, or any other variety of questions. Like these guys, who really wanted me to have a go on their Royal Enfield. So of course, I obliged. Just before Goa, we reached the beautiful town of Malvan, where we decided to take a few days off the bikes to just relax on the beach with these guys. Just riding over this bridge now, which marks the entrance to Goa.
We spent a few days in Goa, lying on the beach and enjoying some good coffee and getting our fix of Western food. It was the busiest part of the coast we'd been on, and it didn't take us long to crave the remoteness of rural India again and to want to be back on the road. We made our way through the Portuguese colonial architecture, the busy highways, and built up city areas. And before long, we were on the outskirts of the city, making our way back into rural India. River crossings were still a daily occurrence, and even if there wasn't a bridge that was ready to be used, there was always a way across. We hadn't camped much while being in India, but with some stretches of quiet, pristine coastline, we thought that we should do it more. So when we came across this piece of beachfront land, it seemed like an ideal place to spend the night. So we asked who we thought was the owner if it was okay to set up camp here. We were immediately invited in for lunch with him and his wife, and found out that he wasn't the owner, he was the caretaker of the land, which had been bought by a trust to build a free school for kids. We later met the chairman of the trust, and he told us that we were more than welcome to camp on this land, as it is owned by God, like all land, to be used freely by all. We were invited to join them again for dinner and breakfast the next morning, where we were fed like royalty, and enjoyed hearing about all the good things their trust is doing for underprivileged children around the world. We met up with Samed and his friends one day after they contacted us via Instagram when they saw that we were going to be riding through their city and asked if they could join us for a ride. They were a great bunch of guys who we really enjoyed hanging out with and it was fun to watch Samed give one of our loaded bikes a try. We just reached Kerala today, which we heard was going to be the nicest stretch of the trip. So far it's just been hectic, road works everywhere, the traffic's crazy. The construction of a new highway in Kerala state meant a lot of busy, dirty highway riding to start with. But it didn't take us long to get onto the back roads and find the Kerala we were looking for.
In Kerala, you're never far from a few things, including huge posters of Lionel Messi, communist flags, a communist graffiti on the walls, or more huge posters of Lionel Messi. You're also never far from smiling, welcoming people, like these ladies, who when they saw us pushing our bikes along the beach, invited us over for tea and snacks, and just to hang out for a while. We were nearing the end of our trip down India's west coast and honestly never thought it could be this good. We started out with a little hesitation but were leaving with nothing but good memories. The landscape on this route was amazing to ride through. We'd eaten so much good food and met some amazing people. I know we plan on coming to ride this coast again one day and recommend you do too. For now, it's on to Thailand and the rest of Southeast Asia. And you can keep up with our journey at We Ride Bikes Places on Instagram.